Now, looking at the religions of the world um, from a Christian understanding, we find that there are signs of truth within all religions. The Christian believes that the gospel meta-narrative is true. That's why, that's why a person is a Christian, that they believe this narrative, this story of God so loving the world that he sends Jesus, his son, into the world uh, that we may be redeemed. That is at the core of the Christian meta-narrative. Um, Christians believe that. But they believe that within the world religions, everywhere, there are signs pointing towards that universal truth, um, preparing people to consider the gospel. Uh, we, we, uh, we call these signs of truth. Signs of truth. <clears throat> uh, for example, in Somalia, one of my very dear friends was called Ahmed Haile. Ahmed Haile. And this Ahmed became a Christian when he was 17 years old. He lived in central Somalia. And I asked him, why did you become a Christian? Well, he said, in the mosque, in the mosque, when I was a little boy of seven years old, memorizing the Quran, the imam, the leader of the mosque, used to say that the Taurat, meaning the Torah, The Taurat, meaning the Torah, of the prophet Moses is revealed scripture. Now, all Muslims believe that the Quran was sent down by God to humanity through the prophet Muhammad. All Muslims believe that. That's at the center of the Muslim faith. But the Quran says that there are also other scriptures that have been revealed by God, not just the Quran. For example, the Taurat of the prophet Moses. In fact, the Quran mentions other scriptures such as the Psalms or the Gospel of Jesus the Messiah also as having been, or even the Bible, as having been revealed by God. So the Quran has a high respect for these other scriptures, but specifically in the mosque, the Imam would emphasize that the Torah of the prophet Moses came from God. And so this little seven-year-old boy in the mosque would hear this from the imam. And he would say in his soul, I would like to read the Torah sometime. I wonder how I could find the Torah. He didn't know where it could be found. And he was a little timid to ask questions of this very important imam. So he didn't ask him where it can be found. But he tucked it into his soul, that question. The Torah of the prophet of, of God, the Torah of, from God came through the prophet Moses. I'd like to read that book sometime. When he was 15, he took ill of malaria. And he was admitted to a hospital, which was a Christian hospital in his town. That's the first time he ever met a Christian. One of the nurses was a Christian woman. And so when he began to get better from his malaria, he asked her to please give him something to read in the English language. And she gave him the Torah, <laughs> which would be the book of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Genesis, the first part of the Torah. Very interesting. It tells the story of Joseph and of Abraham, you know, and of Isaac and, uh, and so forth and so forth. The story of Abraham, it's all there in the book of Genesis. The Quran refers to Abraham, it refers to Joseph, but the stories aren't in the Quran. And so here for the first time he gets in his hands the Torah, the book of Genesis, and he starts to read it and he is simply captivated, you see. And so he says there within Islam was a sign 
that prepared me for the Torah. I began to yearn for the Torah. And as I read that book, I read additional scriptures, and finally, I met Christ and came to faith in Christ, you see. And so he is very grateful for that sign within Islam that pointed him towards Christ. Another sign he often talked about was every year his father would, have, would offer the best lamb in their, um, in their uh, flocks, the very best lamb, a one-year-old lamb that was a perfect lamb. His father would always, once a year, sacrifice a perfect lamb and sprinkle the blood around the homestead and so forth at the time when the Muslims were having the Feast of Sacrifice, uh, which they have annually. And uh, he would keep asking himself, what's this about? Why do we Muslims offer an animal once a year at the time of the Feast of Sacrifice? There must be something within it that is a sign of truth that he did not understand. Well, many years later, as he began to read the New Testament, he discovered that Jesus is the Lamb of God. And he said, oh, those sacrifices in Islam that we participate in, in that we participate in every year must be a sign pointing forward to Jesus, who is the Lamb of God. That would be another sign within Islam that he saw, which was very helpful in preparing him to consider the Christian faith. Now, when Christians meet with world religions, they always find some of those signs there. I think the most significant sign of all is the belief in God. When my father and mother went to serve among the Zanaki people, they asked them, do you know about God the Creator? And they said, yes, yes, we know that there is God who is the Creator of the heavens and the earth. But he went on a journey and he will never come back again. So we don't know much about him. Okay? So when my father translated the book of Matthew into the Zanaki language, he used their local name for God, which was Murungu. Murungu, the name for God among the Zanaki. He didn't import a foreign name like God into their culture, no. He used a local name. Uh, for God. Uh, and so when they receive the Gospel of Matthew into their own language, they read the very first page just, of the Gospel of Matthew and they discover that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. They said, oh, the Murungu who went on a journey has come back in Jesus. He's walking among us in Jesus, you see. And so the sign was already in the culture pointing the people towards the God of the Bible. They didn't know much about God. They just knew he was the creator. Whether he was good or bad, they didn't have a clue. But they knew there was a creator. And when they met Jesus, they met the creator having returned and walked among us, who they thought had gone on a journey and would never return again. So in all cultures, you find that. Bible translators when they go into different languages, like the 3,000 languages that have portions of the Bible in them now, they always look for a local name for God. And almost always, they find a local name for God. Uh, that being a sign preparing people to believe in God. Now, not always, not always. They don't always find a local name for God, particularly in Buddhism. That's a pr problem because within Buddhism, Buddha did not, like we said yesterday, the other day, Buddha did not believe in a God. He was an agnostic, you see. And so Buddhis Buddhism is bereft of an understanding of a creator God. It's not there within Buddhism. And so that becomes a challenge. And so sometimes the church has to import a new name for God from outside the culture, particularly in Buddhist societies. That can happen sometimes. But that's unusual. Almost always they find a local name for God. One thing they do within Buddhist cultures, the Bible translators, is to go into the language of the people before Buddhism came. Okay, if Buddhism doesn't have a name for God, 
before Buddhism came, did the local Thai culture have some awareness, for example, have some awareness of a God who created. And so oftentimes in the language before Buddhism came, they will find a local name for God. And so then they use that name in the Bible translation work. So all of these we refer to as signs preparing people for the gospel. These signs are not the gospel, they're signs. And they point in the right direction. Um, and it's important for people to follow the sign <laughs> to find the truth. Uh, some people simply get stuck on the sign and they'll say, well, this is wonderful that we believe. Uh, many of my Muslim friends will say, it's wonderful that we believe uh, that the Torah came from God. Christians also believe the Torah came from God. It's just simply wonderful. We all believe in these scriptures. We are agreed about that, that the Psalms came from God, that the gospel came from God. And so we're all together in that. A more important question is, do we read these scriptures, you know, or do we simply say the sign is enough? We believe in them, and so we stop there. No, it's important to follow the sign to where it is pointing. Like this Ahmadid, who said, not only do I believe in the Torah, but I will also explore what the Torah has to say so that I may discover the truth that is in the Torah. I don't just look at it on my shelf saying, a wonderful book. I actually explore what it has to say. So in all religions, wherever we go, we find that there are signs of truth pointing in directions which are helpful. It's not the fullness of the truth, but signs of the truth are found there. While we continue being a benevolent project, your kind donations will continue to be vital in fulfilling the calling of TVS ministry. We do count on your gracious support and cooperation. For detailed information, please visit tvsseminary.com.